Hey, good Friday morning. Welcome to the WLBB Community Voice on News Talk 1330 FM 106.3. Streaming live online at Newstalk1330.com. And this morning we're on the News Talk 1330 WLBB Facebook page. I'll introduce you to uh, my guests here in just a second. But first, let us try and give away $100 in your opportunity to uh, possibly win $1,000 here in a couple of weeks. This is the random Christmas trivia cash giveaway. I've got a question for today and will for the next 10 days. Uh, when you know the answer, visit our website, Newstalk1330.com. Click the random Christmas trivia banner. Enter your name, email, phone, and then your answer. We're asking that you uh, only put one entry, um, or actually one entry from the correct answers we picked at random daily, and that contestant will win $100 cash. Please enter only once per day because the elves sorting that, uh, if they see you've entered more than once, uh, they're going to pull you uh pull your name there and disqualify you for that day on december the 16th one of our 12 daily winners along with the 13th winner selected at random that morning will have a chance to turn that 100 dollars into 1000 dollars at a live remote broadcast at the amp on bradley street uh in Carrollton. this is the second day of this questioning and here it is according to the gospel of matthew to what town did the star likely lead the wise men and uh and the comment here is put on your thinking caps for this one Again, according to the Gospel of Matthew, to what town did the star likely lead uh, the wise men? Go to Newstalk1330.com and and get the process started, and good luck. We'll have another question on Monday, so hope you tune in. This morning, my guest, Carroll County's Aggressive Criminal Enforcement Unit. uh, The group is comprised of officers from various law enforcement agencies unified in fighting crime in Carroll County. We've got Chad Taylor, Kyle Jones, and Ian Wright with us this morning. Gentlemen, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And uh, complimenting the uh, the ace attire here before the show. I mean, that's a pretty good gimmick. G- yeah. Do you guys wear that uh, while you're working? Is this more like a public thing? To uh... Uh, It's a little bit of both. Yeah. So we wear it uh, while we work, and sometimes it's not applicable while we work. But, yeah, it is uh, it is definitely a brand that we're proud of. Uh, it it kind of represents what we do, and I mean, we hope bad guys know what it means when we show up. Well, it, it's sharp, and I, and I heard there's only two ways to get the, uh, you know, like if I, if I wanted a hat, there's only two ways. Yeah, that's true. That I can that's get there. Okay, well, we, won't, we won't talk about those, those ways. Or obviously one of them is being part of the group. Um, <laughs> several things we can talk about this morning. Hey, but next week, <laughs> next Wednesday, we've got you guys coming back on. Uh, you're going to bring in, uh, I think, some other officers, yeah, right? Yeah, crime suppression guys um, are marked uniform guys. You'll have uh, Ken Evans. Uh, with the sheriff's office and uh, Kyle Marshall. Okay, and well, ho- totally different topics. When yeah, they they have on. a little different skill set, a little different job set. Uh, they're uh, a little bit more overt, uh, probably in their actions. They're out uh, being seen, stopping cars, uh, generate just crime suppression, stopping crime in certain areas. Well, the, the first thing that you guys were, were open about talking about um, this morning was uh, a recent case, terrible case um, of a shooting in downtown Carrollton. Uh, it was last year, last summer, end of last summer. Uh, 17-year-old girl's life was taken. Uh, and there are other people in the car with her that are dealing with a lot of uh, you know, trauma from that as well. Uh, the uh, individual who was charged in that shooting pled guilty and uh, was recently sentenced. And um, and you guys are willing to talk a little bit more about that. And, uh, and I hope the family, you know, not trying to, you know, make this. Uh, uh, you know, get get people to, to to listen to the story just because it's it's newsworthy. But I mean, just talk about the investigation a little bit and the incident, and and thankfully it it seems to be a rare thing. And perhaps we can even talk about what's been done um, on the square to make sure help prevent something like that happening again. Um, <clears throat> yeah, if you don't mind talking a little bit about the about, about that case. I mean, it was what, what the end of end of July last year. Yes, yeah, sir. It was July uh, going into August twenty twenty two. Just after, shortly after midnight, I was the investigator on call. I went on call at midnight, actually. Um, got called in to a shooting on the square. Responded. Um, we had two victims at Tanner, and then, uh, or actually all three victims were at Tanner, but the shooting took place uh, in the parking deck on the square. Um, the suspect was in custody. Later determined it was, his name was Richard Sigmund. Um, so, Went, responded to Tanner after I went to the crime scene and then uh, just started our investigation from there. And he initially kind of suggested that he was a victim in the case, right? Wasn't that? Uh, initially, yeah, he was. Uh, there was some dispute over what exactly what happened. Uh, but later, in on in the investigation, after watching some video, uh, it was ultimately determined that he was the suspect. And 
that was it. Uh, and I heard somebody they off the record told me this, but this was about two years ago that one of the videos kind of showed. Um, you know, they thought the hand of God came down and smacked him because he he had that giant bump on his head, that scrape on his head. And, yes, you know, sir. I think initially there were questions like, you know, wow, the cops caught up with him, but. But the, you know, from what I was told, somebody was like, he watched that video, and it was just like the hand of God came down and smacked him in the head and That's, knocked him down. That is a fact, yeah. He uh, he did all that to himself uh, shortly after the shooting happened. Um, the yeah. um, How long did it take you guys to be convinced that you had the the right uh, suspect in this case? I mean, because, I mean, it took, you know, a year and a half to, to go, you know, to get through court. But, yes. I mean, how, how, long, how long did you guys have to be ready? And, and I'm guessing you probably want those things to go to court as soon as they can. So Yeah, we knew then – an hour or two um that we had the right guy <clears throat> excuse me yeah we knew within an hour or two after watching video from the parking deck um, that it was him there was no doubt about it um just the rest of the investigation was basically just putting pieces together of how he got there if if we could determine why it happened um which we ultimately never could uh, never got an answer from him of why the shooting took place but uh, yeah, it was just a, shortly thereafter, within an hour, hour and a half, we figured out it was him without a shadow of a doubt. How, how do you? Um, I figure you got to you got to get involved with the family. I mean, how do you? I mean, because you're, you're going to feel I mean, you're going to see that family every day, talk to them every day, and things like that. How how was that relationship? And you know, how do you how do you say stay strong for them? You're, you know, you got to talk to them and tell them those things. Yeah, it was it was good. Uh, you know, we we met with them obviously down at the hospital um, and stayed close to them throughout the investigation they were very cooperative very appreciative of our work um shout out to the da's office too they did an excellent job dealing with the family throughout the entire investigation um but yeah it's uh you just don't have the words you right. can't you know. i mean it's such a shocking incident and um you know i mean it touched everybody i think in our community i mean you know in all of carroll county i mean the story went national too yes sir. and you see a beautiful young girl you see her picture up there um you know shared to millions of people and i'm sure the families received a lot of uh, support from you know, maybe all over the U.S. Um, one of the things in that <clears throat> in that case was allegedly maybe one or two of the restaurants on the square had, had noticed that uh, Sigmund had been overserved and maybe even threatened to uh, uh, shoot somebody. I think Betty, talking to Betty Cation, she, she said that um, you know city officials went and talked to all these restaurants to kind of make clear what their responsibility is in the future to hopefully prevent something like that. Has that have we seen um, instances since then? Are you guys aware of instances since then that um, that may have been practiced? Because it, it, at that point, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you, the, the, the restaurants allegedly, you know, knew something, knew, knew he could be a danger to the community if not the restaurant, but allowed him to uh, to walk out. Yeah, that I would say we have not seen. I don't think probably before or after have we seen to know, that something need. like this. Like this is a pretty. I mean, this is a pretty extreme case level of violence. That's mm -hmm. really, truly a random act of violence. Mm -hmm. uh, we never were able to put a connection between them together beforehand. Um, and, I mean, there's video like we talked about. There's video of the incident. And it's very clear. This is a uh, random act of violence. It, it is a random. There is never a connection. They were almost able to recreate his entire night using video camera. Mm -hmm. through the. So the city has done a really good job of encompassing the square with video. Mm -hmm. um, and that's going to continue to grow. Uh, the businesses uptown are on board with that. Um, and I do know there's a lot of things in place now uh, for security at the bars and things like that. They all have to wear certain colored shirts. The city has intervened. I don't know how if that was prior to uh, the okay. Sigmund case or this, but I do know that there are some steps in place. And, um, you know, and there's been some change of ownership up there. There's always a constant. You know, these the restaurants and bars, they – they ebb and flow and sell and you know new new tenants take over mm -hmm. so uh but we i have not to say that we've seen one we haven't seen one like this before or since yes sir. Uh, but i do i do know that they did a um the city has addressed it as far as if there's any future how we want to deal with problems when we want to get the police involved and kind of what your responsibility is as a security for that, like a private security bouncer, whatever you want to call them. Mm -hmm. um, you know, essentially you work to the door and then the police work the community side of it, the streets, the sidewalks, and go from there. And not reporting something like that, do you, do you think, you know, just your opinion here, do you think that maybe those restaurants are concerned about it, you know, the image that it'll have if we report there's a guy in here who's threatened with a gun? I don't, I don't know that it's an image thing as much as it is uh, – I mean, we live in a college town, so uh, sometimes at bars there's, you know, high levels of intoxication is not an uncommon thing. Uh, and you don't always know that there's going to be some extreme level of violence. Now, there, you know, there's your typical fights and things like that, but 
uh, I don't know that you could anticipate kind of what happened that Which night. Mindset, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, All right. Well, yeah, I mean, again, we hope our our thoughts are with uh, the families that were affected by that, and hope they can, um, you know. Have a decent holiday. Holidays is coming up right now. Uh, time right now is eight forty. Our guest this morning: Chad Taylor, Kyle Jones, and Ian Wright, part of Carroll County's Aggressive Criminal Enforcement Unit. We're going to talk about some current drug trends that we're seeing. Also, uh, the use of um, you know, guns with a Glock. We've seen a lot of Glocks pop up in the community. We'll talk about that and talk about technology-based investigations in uh, the coming segments. Again, time right now is eight forty. Any questions or comments? Feel free to post those on the uh, News Talk thirteen thirty WLBB Facebook page. We will be back with more after this. The Entrepreneur Scholar Journey at Oak Mountain Academy is designed to provide students with a clearly defined curriculum-based track to acquire essential knowledge and skills for success in business and leadership. Critical areas include identifying entrepreneurial characteristics, selecting a value position, and business model development. I'm Patrick Uran, Head of School, inviting you to journey with us on the mountain. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight forty-two. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice Program News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Good morning to Dalton Shatterix. He's checking in on the uh, News Talk thirteen thirty Facebook page, watching uh, our show this morning. My guests: Chad Taylor, Kyle Jones, Ian Wright, with Carroll County's Aggressive Criminal Enforcement Unit. Uh, talked about uh, a recent uh, case in, in our community that affected, impacted us uh, immensely uh, in the first segment. And um, if you missed any of it, you can go back and, and listen to that program. It'll be on the website, Newstalk1330.com, shortly after this program. All right, right now, we talk about some current drug trends and uh, which one of you gentlemen are going to start us off. Obviously, the fentanyl's a big deal. We continue to, to, to see and hear stories about that. Right. Overdoses, uh, those aren't slowing down, are they? They have slowed down. Yeah, they, they have slowed down. Our at least our fatal overdoses um, have slowed down in Carroll County at this time of year compared to last, last year. year. So 2022 stats uh, compared to so far in 23, um, we're actually on track to do better, a lot better with our overdoses, especially those that are, um, you know, fatality overdoses. So is that because of the Narcan? I think it, I think it's a multifaceted thing. I think you got Narcan, so. Um, the availability of Narcan now, or Naloxone, has is just saturated the community between first, it started with first responders getting it, you know, obviously the hospital had it, but then it, it came out to first responders where all the police officers, the deputies, the fire EMS, they all have it with them. You know, that was a few years ago, that kind of started being a, a big trend, but now we're even seeing it where the public, you know, there's access to it um, at the, you know, the public can go to Walgreens or a pharmacy and buy it over the counter now and uh, there's a standing order basically for those pharmacies that they can sell that um, and so we're seeing it now at every drug house we bust um, we're seeing Narcan as well so people are actually it's almost like a, a package deal you know if you go to buy heroin or fentanyl and a lot of people don't just buy straight fentanyl they want to buy heroin or whatever but they know the risk that fentanyl has worked its way into mm-hmm. these these drugs um, especially the, the press pills, the fake prescription pills that we see um, because they're cheaper to make and you can make a better profit of it than buying real oxycodone or selling real oxycodone. Um, but now we're seeing Narcan even at you know drug distribution locations in the county and the city. So buy an um, ounce, get a Narcan free or something. Yeah, like and they'll they'll have it with them. You know they'll have they'll keep some in their pocketbook or their car, or their you know their belongings or whatever, and or at their houses. So I think. The availability of Narcan. Um, also, you know, we we try to handle it on the the proactive enforcement side of being proactive and working cases specifically dealing with prescriptions and uh, fentanyl heroin distribution locations um, to try to put those out of obviously out of business. You know, in our community um, to hopefully cut down on those overdoses as well. So we have seen a decrease 
in overall overdoses, whether they're you know people survive them or they don't, from last year to this year. Um, and I, you know, you've had a big community push. Um, I know at the city, um, the the fentanyl coalition, coalition yeah. and the the you know we had the fentanyl summit that we all went to and spoke at, and a lot of good speakers there and testimonies on you know family members that have passed away and just what we can do as a community to try to cut down on it. And I think we have seen um, effects from that within the last 12 months. We've seen a decrease in those. But well, you've seen it, but but there's still possible that there are, because they have the Narcan. I mean, oh, they're you still guys are never even finding out about it, right? I mean, right. they're just taking care of themselves and their buddy. And, yeah. And it's not reporting. But we're about to see a big push um, as far as the uh, fentanyl coal fentanyl awareness coalition i mean about the big media push i mean in the radio the papers i mean yeah even at the movie theater i mean we're about to see a, a lot of uh promotion yeah. for that right? yeah i took my kids to uh trolls three the other day and i seen the <laughs> uh, the uh that uh preview on there and then i at the uh the carrollton football game uh the playoff game a couple of weeks ago they you know oh, yeah. at some point during the football game on the big uh i don't know if they still call it the jumbotron or the the trojan when I was in the, when I was at Carrollton, it, you know, we had the jumbotron, yeah. uh, but it's a, the screen's a lot bigger now. But um, a commercial for the fentanyl, the, the work that they've done, the media uh, release that yeah. they've done for that. Why will that have an impact? Do you think? I mean, like awareness. We, yeah, it's awareness. Yeah. I mean, you know, you know, if you're if you're a teenager in high school, um, we'd be naive to think that you know teenagers don't have access to to drugs. Um, and, and that's kind of a vulnerable population in our community. So if they, you know, whether it's an injury or whatever, or they, they get into the parent's medication cabinet or something and, and have taken an oxycodone before, and then all of a sudden, you know, some guy they know or, or whoever is selling oxycodone pills or what they think is oxycodone pills, and, uh, you know, the real ones sell for $30, but this guy's selling them for 10 or $15, likely is that, you know, more likely than not, that's a press pill. That's a fake pill that just has cutting agent, fentanyl, and it's pressed into the same shape and stamp and markings as an oxycodone pill. So you would have no way to know that it's real or fake unless the crime lab tests it. Um, and when you ingest that, if you know if you're used to prescription grade oxycodone, your body's you know has can absorb that. That's a, not a fatal dose, just one oxycodone. But you take this with fentanyl in it. I mean, fentanyl is so many times stronger than any other opioid that, you know, we commonly see. So you're going to take more of that then? Is that to make up for the oxycodone? Like there's less oxycodone in that, in that one pill of fentanyl? You're not going to? No. They, so what happens is where these cartels press these pills in, in, in these big batches and these pill mills uh, that are making these fake pills, they're putting a little bit of fentanyl with other just, you know, cutting agent, mm -hmm. just powder, whatever, and pressing it to the same markings and shape and everything as a real oxycodone pill um, to make them look the exact same. Um, the problem is they're not chemists and mm. fentanyl is way more stronger than oxycotton. And so when those get on the street, they're cheaper because they're way cheaper to make in bulk and you can sell them cheaper. But when people buy those, they think they're getting a real oxycodone pill, which is not going to be so fatal. They still believe that. I mean, you know, when you guys arrest people, people still believe that. I mean, mm -hmm. it just seems like you wouldn't trust any of it this point you would think but you know i mean addiction's very addiction. and it's a strong you know drug within itself yeah i mean yeah. addiction's very uh people you know they just have to have it and um you know you ever seen somebody with like chronic pain i mean they're gonna do what they have to do mm -hmm. really i mean we can't there's no way to get around there's no way no commercial no media release is going to prevent somebody from going out and buying drugs if they are dead set on buying drugs mm -hmm. um and they're going to take that risk and a lot of times that's what we see, and it's usually with the, the younger uh, population of accidentally, you know, getting a fake one instead of a real one, or what they, they don't know that, but the, the drug dealer, you know, and they take that and then they overdose. I mean, basically their respiratory system shuts down because of that fentanyl in, them, in their system. Um, and so that's, so yeah, I think, I think those media release, especially like, you know, even with, with our school age, you know, high school and, and you know, maybe even younger. I think it's beneficial. Um, I think it, you you got to have a combined approach. I think the Fentanyl Coalition, um, the Fentanyl Summit, awareness, having these people you know that have lost loved ones come out and speak uh, to parents that are dealing with children that have addiction problems, or the parent. I mean, a lot of times it's the yeah. the parents that have the addiction problem, and um, and we hate seeing that. We you know, 
a lot of times the places we go, we, there are children involved, you know, and with crappy parents. I mean, I, I hate to say it, but just, you know, and, and they have to suffer through that. And then that leads to another generation of dealing with the same issues that mom and daddy passed down onto them because that's how they grew up. So I think, it, you know, working with defects, working with all the our crisis intervention folks um, at the city and the county, it's a we have to have a combined approach. And, and we have that here, thankfully. And, you know, we spe kind of specialize in the, the proactive you know shutting down these places mm -hmm. that are doing these illegal things and th these houses and these uh drug dealers trying to put them in jail i mean that's our that's our part of the mission that's our part of the puzzle before we uh, take our, our final break here can you guys you know give me a picture of like how many you know fentanyl or oxycodone pills that you guys have you know can you, you put you put it all in a mac truck for the last year um you're in a tractor trailer are it's we not that not not i wish i wish yeah. we could put it all in a mac truck that'd be that yeah, so we this year was our biggest opioid drug seizure year we've ever had. Mm -hmm. um, and one in particular, right? Was it this year or was it the end of last year that you guys had, like, the biggest? It was this year. Was this this summer, year? we had several back-to-back -back that were just really much larger busts than no, we normally do. So to kind of tell you, the ACE unit we have, Chad talked about earlier, our crime suppression guys. Then you have us. We have several just plainclothes investigators. Um, but we work together on a, just one team, the eight peop eight person team. And – we are a street level drug unit so um you know we'd love to have enough dope we seize to fill up this table every bus we go out on that's not the reality we're a street level drug unit there are other drug units that work those higher level you know your state and federal agencies are going to work the cartel level stuff um coming out of atlanta but we work specifically in the county so yes earlier in the summer we had uh, our biggest one we seized uh about five thousand oxycodone pills um, and we're waiting to see if those were fake fentanyl pill it takes a while for them to be sent to the crime lab and come back so but about 5,000 I mean it was several I mean it was a large amount of oxycodone pills and uh, like I think one and a half kilos of methamphetamine mm -hmm. a half a kilo of uh, powder cocaine um, some other type of prescription pills that were that were seized um, in that one case um, so we're trying, and we've worked several other good cases where people were distributing uh, opioid pills, um, some fentanyl press pills, and some real oxycodone pills. It's whatever they can get their hands on. Just the real prescriptions, they're harder to get now because they're regulated more. Sure, yeah. um, so, you know, a lot of times people will take the chance with those fentanyl ones. All right, time right now is 8.54. We're going to come back with about five minutes in this program. Uh, Community Voice brought to you by Tanner Health System and Oak Mountain Academy. Oak Mountain Academy is an innovative school of academic excellence celebrating over 61 years. I'm Patrick Uran, head of school, inviting you to join us on the mountain to see our mission and vision in action. Academic excellence, a faith-based environment, and dynamic opportunities are just a few of the reasons our families choose Oak Mountain Academy. Academic scholarships and tuition assistance are available. For more information, visit us at oakmountain.us. Discover your journey at OMA. Prepare, explore, and achieve. Health is a journey. It's making better choices, even when it's not easy. It's taking care of yourself and the people you love. At Tanner Health System, we're there for you with every step, with primary care, heart care, cancer care, women's care, orthopedics, surgical services, and so much more. We're dedicated to helping you live and feel your best. So let's get on that journey to health. You've got places to be for many years to come. Find us at Tanner.org. Eight five four. Welcome back to the WLBB Community Voice News Talk thirteen thirty FM one hundred six point three. Wrapping up our program with uh, the ACE unit here in uh, Carroll County. Um, got some comments here online. Javier Alvarez says Kyle Jones is a one hundred percent cool officer. Actually, I think it says two hundred percent cool officer. You already know Javier. What's up? And uh, Kim Fitz says thank you guys for what you do. And um, Meredith Hoyle Browning. I don't know how she would know, but she says that you guys do a phenomenal job. Thank you, Meredith. So, yeah, thank you uh, for checking in. Meredith. I'm just kidding, Meredith. Obviously, she knows. But, yeah, thanks for uh, checking into the program this morning. Uh, we try and get as many things here in the last four minutes that we did talk about at the beginning. Uh, we've seen a lot more of the Glock switches that you guys are recovering. Um, is there a reason for that? I guess exactly. Tell us exactly what those are, and uh, is there a reason that we're starting to see more of those? We have. This, you know, kind of the end of last year into so far this year, we've seen an up 
increasing uh, or increasing our seizure of those uh, firearms accessories. That's all that. So a, a Glock switch it kind of turns um, something into a machine gun. It turns it into a machine gun. So it's the it basically replaces the black the back plate on a Glock. Um, goes in there. There's some that are they look like the normal Glock back plate um, where you can't really tell unless you function check the the firearm. Um, the majority of the ones we've seen, they stick out a little more, and they actually do have a switch that will switch it from semi-auto, meaning it fires one round when you pull the trigger, to fully automatic. So as long as you hold the trigger down and it's got ammo in there, it's going to keep shooting. Um, so we've seen an increase in those um, in the city, in the county, um, and in the amount that we've been seizing as well. So um, I think those – the reason why I would guess is that just the availability of them. Um, they buy them, they're shipped. A lot of times they're manufactured overseas mm -hmm. and, and they're cheap to make. I mean, they're just a small piece of aluminum basically. Um, and they're, they're shipped over here. You can buy them cheap and you just take the risk. You know, the people are going to take that risk of putting them on there. They kind of become a cultural um, stamp, I guess. Like if you, you know, you have a fully auto Glock, it's kind of like a, uh, something to you know aspire to i guess if you're in the criminal yeah, element you know but um we have yeah. seen them we've been seizing a lot of them um we will also work hand in hand uh with some federal agencies we work a lot with the atf um one of our former officers is a an agent with the atf now and or we actually have several former officers that work for the atf but one specifically kind of works this area um, we work hand in hand with him on a lot of cases. We've actually sent a lot of, of our cases federal this year, working more with the feds um, on our violent repeat offender. Mm -hmm. um, so people that just have you know have been convicted of several you know felonies in the past and continue to commit you know felonies here in the community, especially involving weapons and drugs, we're sending those cases federal. Well, yes. <laughs> let's, so. let's give it a heads up. Uh, we have about two, two minutes left in the show. Right. And real quick, do we see those guns being used, being associated with drugs more, or just yeah, drugs, and drugs and guns, drugs, yeah. guns and money. That's the three main food groups and what we do. And yeah, we see them every every drug house we go to has has weapons in it. I'll say ninety nine, you know, percent of the drug houses that we do search warrants on that we go to. They're going to have guns and in there. That's just another penalty, man. That's just another uh, law that's another break in. It's going to stack on there. All right. Uh, got about two minutes here. Uh, unfortunately, there was a situation uh, last year where a Carrollton police officer, uh, resource officer, was accused of um, you know, uh, allowing an 11 year old girl to inappropriately touch him in her basement. It was off school grounds. Um, the uh, hearing, there was a blind hearing. Um, uh, this past Monday where he pled guilty and 65 years behind bars. I think that the maximum might have been 75. Um, he ended up getting 65. Um, and Judge Hightower, I mean, came down pretty hard. I, mean, I don't know if you guys heard that. Yeah, you guys were there. You, you heard that um, speech. But, I mean, as an officer, when you see something like that happen, I mean, embarrassed, more mad about it. Uh, you know, what are your feelings on that? So I will, I will give you the Chad Taylor down dirty, non-political version here. Um, you yeah, I think my my ver I think my initial response is mad. Uh, I think I probably share a lot of the same opinion that Judge Hightower did. Uh, when you are in one of the highest trusted positions, we're trusting you with our greatest asset, our kids. And you betray that trust and you violate a kid, which was also one of our most vulnerable. Um, that that comes with a heavy consequence because we have guys there, uh, our SROs now. They're phenomenal. I mean, I would trust my kid with them any day. But that's a you know, that's a black eye to all police, them specific, especially the guys that do the job right, that go out there, they look out for these kids, they love on these kids. And for someone to take that position and benefit themselves and victimize a kid, I think it is, I, I think Judge Hightower was spot on. And that is the the chad taylor version of it and that is i'm gonna try and get that transcript on our website i did ask for that but um but yeah he i mean it's something worth uh, worth reading we're we wrapped up the case guys thanks for coming out uh time right now is 8 59 stay tuned for national uh news my guest this morning chad taylor kyle jones ian wright if you missed any of it it'll be up on our website here shortly news talk 1330.com stay dry this weekend and uh we'll catch you monday on the community voice at 8 30.